Hi, now it's time to write the introduction to your thesis. The introduction. So what the introduction should do is to provide the reader with an idea of the background and the significance of your studies. It's basically the question, why has this been important to address? Why would you even start writing and doing experiments on such a topic? So it's the background and significance. So all that background and significance is supposed to lead to the final section of your introduction. And I would suggest that you write this final section first. And that is the questions, the central questions of your thesis and the aims that you have been pursuing. So the questions and aims of your study is what the entire introduction should lead the reader to. So importantly, you should not be writing a review on the general topic of your thesis. No review. Instead, it's important to just summarize those facts that will guide the reader to those central questions and aims that you make the last chapter of your introduction section. So you don't write a general review. And, you know, it's very tempting to just collect and collect more and more data, more and more papers, more and more publications that you all accumulate and you get ambitious about putting them all into your introduction so you show the reader about your profound knowledge. But no, you don't quite want to do that. You just collect the most important publications that you will find and that are directly relevant to the topic and to the questions and aims that you have been uh, pursuing in your thesis. And, and only that should go into the introduction. So ideally, you guide the reader by bringing up those most important pieces of background to understand the significance of your study and then make it a very natural consequence of that background that you're now raising that uh, question and that you are now pursuing that aim. That would be the ideal introduction. It should all lead to those questions and aims to be described in the final section of the introduction chapter. So you don't write a review and even more importantly, you don't copy paste from the internet. Again, here it's particularly tempting. No copy paste. You know, after having gone through a couple of reviews, you will find that this is so perfectly phrased that you can't really think of making it any better. And that's why you start being tempted to just take this wonderful paragraph describing your general topic from some review and paste it into the introduction uh, section of your thesis. Yeah, but you don't do that. And you don't do it for two reasons. One important reason is that you will get caught very easily. Even your advisor can use Google and even your advisor will realize that if after the usual pidgin English that everyone would, or that at least most people would use in their, uh, in their papers, including myself, uh, if you go from that pidgin English all the way to these perfectly phrased sentences that you have copy-pasted from someone else's review. So it's very easy to recognize that, believe me. And you don't want to get caught for that. That's one reason for not doing that. But the other reason is also that you're not supposed to write another review on your topic. You're just supposed to summarize the most important facts that will lead to the questions and aims of your introduction section. And that's why you emphasize different things than a general review would emphasize. You emphasize just 
that what is really relevant to the experiments and to the study that you have been performing. And that's the other major reason why you never ever do this copy-paste thing. So having said that you're ready to go, you now collect just the most important pieces of literature, you assemble them in a way that allows you to explain to the general readership why your study has been important or at least has been of some interest. Just think about your little brother or sister to whom you want to explain that. So those are the pieces of literature that you really need. You assemble them into a few short chapters describing the background of your study and then make it a very natural thing to end with the questions and aims that you have been pursuing. So you use half a page or even one page to describe that central question in the last chapter of your introduction section. Having done that, you are ready and with the results chapter and the introduction chapter being written, you are now ready to start the discussion section. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video. Thank you.